huge shout out today to Georgia in year six who sent in this amazing robot elephant drawn using a computer. Also to Mr. Roberts and 6RK at St. Martin's. Excellent work. Next year six constructed their designs using cardboard and styrofoam. Here's George's. I'm so inspired by this. I wanted to do this tutorial to help other students do something similar. After you've completed this drawing today, you might want to take on the challenge of this extension activity. Try to draw a sectional view and imagine what could be inside your creations. Pick a starting point and place the splat on that point. I'm going to trace all the way around, including the center line of the splat right there. Now I'm drawing a little darker than you would at home so that you can see it, but you guys need to draw really lightly. Here's the second step, slide up and draw. And for our final step, those two points there, I rotate the splat, line it up, and boom. A pyramid is what we're going to draw on top of this cube. Find that spot and come up, place a dot right there. Put the splat on it and stop that line before it gets to the far edge. I'm going to do the same thing out to the left and stop right there. To help show you what I'm talking about, I'm going to put some dots in three spots. And above that corner, somewhere above, place yourself another dot. I've made mine nice and short so that I can use the edge of the splat as a ruler. And I'm connecting dot to dot. Good. Now I'll show you the lines that you'll need to erase. Next, on that spot, center that ellipse. Notice the four dots. I'm going to draw a line joining those two dots and diagonally the other way. That gives us a crisscross on top of um, the dot. I'm extending those lines out. I'm going to draw a propeller. I'm deciding how long I want the propeller. And I'm using those lines as guidelines for me to draw the propeller blades. You could change the shape if you wanted to. And Georgia has added a little disc in the middle. Here I've erased and doing a little fix up. Next step, let's think about the eyes. Decide how high you want the eyes and I'm going to use the splat to draw a guideline on that isometric angle. Decide how far apart you want your eyes. And I'm rotating the splat until that bottom edge of the paper is in line with the splat. And that's the right angle to use those small ellipses. So I'm centering the small ellipse on the eye and draw. Again, make sure when you do this, the bottom of the splat is parallel with the bottom of the paper. Cool. So there's some basic eyes. If you want them to look a little cuter, you could trace around the same shape a little larger. It's called offsetting a line. To make it look like um, it's reflecting some lights, in a couple of places, put uh, some smaller circles and when you color in just go around those um, little reflections every light source in the room will give you a, another little reflection like that usually two or three in those manga kind of cartoons if you want yours to look like uh, a girl robot then sometimes those eyelashes uh, can work well here I'm planning a center line of the trunk. Yours could be any shape. Now you see the two little lines each side of that small ellipse. I'm going to line it up with the direction of the trunk. So the trick here is to steer those two lines and keep them pointing in the direction of the center line that you drew. And all the way to the end. Looks like it could almost be a spring or something like that. There's the two holes for the trunk. And they seem to have, elephant trunks have a little blip at the top and bottom like that. They can kind of help to grab things with. I'm keeping mine the same shape all the way down. You can have yours get a little bit thicker as it goes towards the head. 
Here I'm using some little creases on the inside of the curves there. Next we're going to draw some ears. We're going to make them box shaped. Here, there's my starting point. I'm rotating the splat. I'm going to show you a little trick here. Rotate it until that side lines up with the vertical. Then on that point, I can draw two lines. One, two. Also the middle. Now I'm sliding the splat to the end of that line and I'm repeating. If you're unsure how long that line should be, think about this. If I copy that line, slide it down on the splat angle and draw, where they meet, that tells you how long the lines need to be. Let's repeat the same thing on the top. Copy that line, slide on the left splat angle, and draw. So I'm drawing a line down, and then I'm going to run a copy of that line from that point across. And now you can see exactly where they need to meet. How about the other side? Well, I'm using that line as a guide. So I'm drawing a line on the other side. It'll be a little bit shorter because some of it's hidden behind that area there. Now remember how we drew this one? We started off that box. I'm putting the ruler under there so I can slide the splat to that point there, to the end of the ear. And I draw those lines in. Use the splat to draw the far edge, and there's your two ears. I'm penciling in lightly where I want the inside of the ears to be. This is a really good idea. Have a go at lightly guessing where it should be and then use the splat to get those angles and firm them in. Eventually, one day, you won't need to use the splat at all. You'll just be able to um, really easily guess these angles and just start drawing, and then designing. Remember how we drew that line at the very beginning using the splat? Well, I'm going to extend that line along a little, and that's what I'm going to use for the body. Do the same thing at the far edge, although some of it's hidden by the trunk, so it won't seem so long. Let's bounce that one back on our left splat angle. So we're drawing the body here. Just need to complete the little bit I'll see there. Now it's time to drop down. Here's a trick. Put your pencil on there, slide your splat all the way down, and then draw those lines in. So we've dropped the body down one splat length. Now, um, it needs to be wider than a cube. Remember, it's a rectangular prism, so I'm going to extend that one and use the splat to come up to that corner. All right. We're almost there. About halfway to the bottom of your page, I'm going to give myself a starting point for the foot. I'm centering that ellipse, and I'm drawing an ellipse in. Decide how wide you want your legs to be. And pop those lines up. I'm going to use a cylinder, so I round it off there. Georgia used hexagons, so you could use any kind of shapes you like. A little rub out there, and let's go on to the next step. I'm looking for the front. So that little dot there lines up with the front, and that's going to be the toe that I'm going to draw in. A uh, big one right there, and one to the left, and one to the right. The one on the right you'll see a little bit less of. That's why it looks a little bit smaller. I'm going to also drop down and give it some thickness. So a cylinder underneath that foot. I'm dropping the toenails down. Now I don't really like the look of this. I actually come back and change the shape of the toes later, but let's go with that for now. Find the center of that original one. Come across to the right one splat length and put a dot. Now I'm doing the same thing again. I'm drawing an ellipse. I'm marking how wide my leg is. Run some lines up. And at the bottom, finish it with half an ellipse to make it look like a cylinder. I'm using that dot to find the front of the ellipse. So the arrow means the front. 
Then I draw one toenail, two, three. Line up your lips, drop it down if you want your foot to have a little bit of thickness. Those toes looked a bit aggressive, so I rubbed them out and I redrew them just as plain toes that stopped right there. Here's adding an extra leg behind. Remember, these two were one splat length apart. Well, come out the left, but not quite so far. Center your lips on it, and it's the same thing again. Cool, now we're going to draw a control panel in the front. So I'm guessing and trying to hand sketch it first, then from that corner, Use your splat to tidy those lines up and get the angles spot on. Notice how I keep the splat straight up and down for most of these operations. If you want it to recess in, then slide it back like that and pop. Whatever details you want to add inside, is cool. I'm going to use um, that one now. Remember to keep the bottom parallel with the bottom of the page and then any circles you draw with that small one will be um, accurate. I'm planning some dots there where I'm going to add those and that one's just hidden a little bit. These could be lights, switches, ports, if you want me to have a look at your drawings, then ask your teacher politely to take a photo and I'm sure they wouldn't mind emailing in something. Um, here we go, little tail right at the back there. So we're getting so close, guys. Some little dots make it look like screws that are holding that panel together for the more mechanical type of look. And those two circles I'm joining together. Now guys, you don't need to copy my shapes here. You can just go wild and come up with whatever um, shapes you want. In the ears, um, I'm doing some light guidelines there and then just placing a grid of nine dots on there. Notice how they line up straight up and down as well. Uh, smile looks pretty good and for a bigger grin, just come back with a second line underneath. So here I've sped up. Um, the cutting line is the heaviest line in the drawing. It's right around the outside. Anything that overlaps has something behind it can also get a heavier line. And I'm using a little bit of gray here. Remember light next to dark. Just try and vary um, the shading a little bit. Thanks so much, Mr. Roberts and George. I've really enjoyed this tutorial. If anyone would like to see more like this, then leave a suggestion, like, subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.